The story of Three Eye Atlas began as just another chapter in humanity's ongoing fascination with interstellar visitors. Astronomers initially expected it to be routine, a distant traveler from another star system making a brief appearance before vanishing back into the dark. But what unfolded around Mars defied every model, every assumption, and perhaps even the laws of physics themselves. For the first time in recorded history, an object from beyond our solar system behaved as if it were alive, or worse, as if it were being controlled. At first, nothing seemed unusual. 3 I Atlas approached the red planet on a predictable trajectory, moving at a blistering 130,000 miles per hour, fast enough to circle Earth five times in a single minute. It was supposed to pass Mars by, offering astronomers a rare chance to observe an interstellar object up close. But then, something impossible happened. Without warning, 3 I Atlas began to slow down. Within hours, it shed nearly all its velocity, as if an unseen force had seized it. The object came to a stop relative to Mars and then, precisely, elegantly, settled into a stable orbit around the planet. The energy required to perform such a maneuver was beyond comprehension. To decelerate an object that size, traveling at interstellar speed, would demand more power than humanity has ever produced. Perhaps more than could be generated by every nuclear reactor on Earth running continuously for years. No natural process could account for it. Comets don't stop mid-flight. Asteroids don't insert themselves into orbit with surgical precision. Whatever 3 I Atlas was, it wasn't behaving like any known celestial body. Scientists worldwide scrambled to make sense of the data. Telescopes and space agencies confirmed what no one wanted to believe. This wasn't a glitch or a misreading. The object had executed a controlled deceleration, using what appeared to be sustained thrust over several hours. During that time, instruments detected intense blue-white emissions radiating from specific points along its surface. Unlike the diffuse reflection of sunlight off ice or dust, these emissions were concentrated and rhythmic, almost like the exhaust of engines firing in perfect synchronization. The implications were staggering. For the object to slow itself down, it would need propulsion far beyond anything Earth had ever conceived. Calculations suggested exhaust velocities approaching 10% of the speed of light, something that would require a propulsion system operating on principles completely unknown to current science. If such a system existed, it could cross the solar system in days, not months. It could travel between stars. It could rewrite the limits of human exploration or annihilation. But perhaps even more disturbing was the efficiency of the maneuver. Normally, a deceleration of that scale would produce immense heat, visible across multiple wavelengths. Yet, the infrared readings showed almost nothing. 3 I Atlas remained cold, only a few degrees above the surrounding temperature of deep space. That meant its propulsion system was converting almost all input energy directly into motion, wasting almost none as heat. To engineers, this was beyond technology. It was perfection. Once in orbit, 3 I Atlas began to act like a machine with purpose. Observations from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and other satellites revealed bursts of electromagnetic activity radiating from the object in structured patterns. At first, these pulses seemed random, but analysis showed a chilling regularity. Waves sweeping systematically across the Martian surface in precise geometric formations. Within 12 hours, 3 I Atlas had scanned the entire planet with what appeared to be high-powered ground-penetrating radar capable of mapping several kilometers beneath the crust. These scans were not indiscriminate. 
they focused on specific regions. The Cydonia Plateau, home of the famous Face on Mars formation, Valles Marineris, the vast canyon system stretching across the Martian equator, and areas where NASA's radar instruments had previously detected signs of ancient water or buried ice. It was as though 3 Eye Atlas knew exactly where to look, targeting the very sites that had puzzled planetary scientists for decades. Then, something even stranger occurred. 3 Eye Atlas began deploying smaller objects toward the Martian surface. Over a two-day period, at least 23 separate modules detached from the main structure and descended toward carefully selected locations across the planet. Some landed near the polar ice caps, others near suspected subsurface water deposits. Three of them appeared to descend within visual range of NASA's Perseverance rover. Each descent was deliberate, controlled, and measured. And then, just as quickly, every single object vanished from detection. Thermal signatures disappeared. Radar returns faded to nothing. The landers were simply gone. Either they buried themselves beneath the Martian soil, cloaked themselves in some form of active camouflage, or ceased emitting any detectable energy at all. One NASA engineer described it bluntly. It's as if Mars just swallowed them. When the Curiosity rover was redirected toward one of the supposed landing sites, it found nothing. No crater, no debris, not even a disturbance in the dust. For the scientific community, the situation had crossed into nightmare territory. Mars now hosted at least 23 unknown objects, likely of artificial origin, and no one could see or study them. Every instrument humanity had, optical, thermal, radar, was useless. The only constant was 3I Atlas itself, still in orbit, silent but active, continuing to emit faint electromagnetic patterns that suggested communication or data exchange with its deployed counterparts. Faced with this mystery, NASA made a controversial decision to attempt direct contact. Using the Deep Space Network's massive radio telescopes, scientists sent a transmission composed of mathematical sequences and geometric proofs, universal symbols meant to represent intelligence. It was a message modeled after those sent by SETI, but this time there was certainty that something intelligent might actually receive it. For more than a day, there was no reply. Then, without warning, 3i Atlas responded. The change was immediate and unmistakable. The object's emissions shifted from random noise to structured, evolving patterns. At first, it mirrored the human transmission, repeating prime numbers and geometric shapes. But then, the signals grew more complex, completing the equations Earth had sent, introducing new ones, as if continuing the conversation. It wasn't a mere acknowledgement, it was an answer, and a test. Mathematicians and cryptographers worked frantically to decode the patterns. They discovered that the responses incorporated principles far beyond current human comprehension. Mathematical frameworks that hinted at higher dimensional understanding. Then came something even more astonishing. Embedded within the data were sequences that, when translated through imaging algorithms, produced three-dimensional maps. The first appeared to depict a star system, not our own, but another. The map showed planetary orbits, stellar coordinates, and what looked like artificial structures in orbit around one of the planets. If the interpretation was correct, 3i Atlas was showing us where it came from. But not all of the decoded imagery inspired wonder. One sequence produced a map of Earth itself, an eerily precise representation of continents, coastlines, and even city networks. Some frames seemed to highlight specific points on the surface, locations that matched known military installations, communication centers, and research facilities. Whether it was coincidence or intent, 
The implication was chilling. 3i Atlas had been observing us, mapping us, possibly even studying us long before its arrival near Mars. As analysis continued, the situation grew more alarming. Trajectory data indicated that 3i Atlas's orbit around Mars was temporary. Its positioning was ideal for a gravity assist maneuver, a slingshot that would send it toward Earth with minimal energy expenditure. Based on current calculations, it could reach Earth's vicinity within six weeks of departure. The suggestion was undeniable. Mars had been a pit stop, not a destination. That realization changed everything. What humanity had initially viewed as a scientific curiosity had now become a potential prelude to first contact or invasion. Defense agencies worldwide began treating the object as a possible threat. The U.S. Space Command, ESA, Roscosmos, and China's CNSA all initiated joint monitoring protocols, sharing data in unprecedented collaboration. Military satellites were repositioned. Contingency plans were drafted in secret meetings. For the first time, Nations across the planet prepared simultaneously for diplomacy and defense. What made the situation so unnerving was the sheer imbalance of power. 3i Atlas had already demonstrated capabilities that rendered human technology obsolete. It could stop on a dime from interstellar speeds. It could deploy precision modules across an entire planet with perfect synchronization. It could hide those modules from every form of detection. And it could communicate through mathematics and energy in ways that transcended human understanding. If such technology were turned against Earth, there would be no defense. A Pentagon analyst summarized it best. They've shown us they can do whatever they want and that we can't stop them. As the weeks passed, activity around Mars intensified. 3i Atlas's emissions grew stronger and more frequent. Observatories detected changes in its orientation, as though it were aligning itself for departure. Power output readings surged. The smaller deployed objects appeared to be transmitting data back to the main structure in synchronized bursts. Every sign pointed to one conclusion. 3i Atlas was preparing to leave Mars, and its next stop was us. Behind the scenes, scientists debated what this meant. Was 3i Atlas an explorer seeking knowledge or a scout assessing potential targets? Was its behavior scientific, archaeological, or military? Some speculated that its interest in Mars stemmed from something deeper. That it was searching for traces of an ancient civilization, perhaps even its own. Mars, after all, bears scars of a once-living world. Evidence shows that billions of years ago, the planet had flowing rivers, lakes, and maybe even oceans. Something catastrophic stripped away its atmosphere, leaving behind a frozen wasteland. But what if life survived underground? What if 3i Atlas's scans and deployments were designed to find it, or to recover something left behind. Others proposed a more disturbing theory. The mathematical sequences embedded in 3i Atlas's transmissions included what some interpreted as coordinates, specific latitudes and longitudes corresponding to regions on Mars. Some of these coordinates aligned with areas known to contain unusual subsurface structures, geometric shapes, and thermal anomalies. To those who dared to speculate, it seemed 3i Atlas was uncovering something deliberately buried, a relic, a vault, or perhaps remnants of a civilization that vanished eons ago. Whatever its purpose, the implications for Earth were impossible to ignore. Humanity was now on the radar of an intelligence that could traverse interstellar space, manipulate gravity, and communicate through universal language. Every attempt to categorize 3i Atlas, comet, probe, weapon, fell short. It was all and none of those things. 
As international agencies struggled to formulate a response, the public grew restless. Amateur astronomers began capturing faint images of 3i Atlas orbiting Mars, feeding a storm of speculation online. Theories multiplied. Some believed it was an alien scout ship. Others said it was an automated probe left behind by an extinct species, and a few insisted it was a warning, a messenger heralding something greater still on the way. Governments walked a tightrope between secrecy and transparency. Some argued that the truth should be withheld to prevent panic. Others believed that humanity had the right to know. But as data leaked and patterns emerged, one truth became unavoidable. Whatever 3i Atlas represented, it was not random. It was deliberate. It was watching. And soon, it would be here. In the final days before its departure from Mars, every major observatory turned its gaze toward the red planet. Reports confirmed the cessation of surface scans and the completion of all deployment activity. 3i Atlas had begun to reorient itself, aligning for a new trajectory. Heat signatures along its structure intensified, signaling the activation of its propulsion system. Within days, it would leave orbit. The world held its breath. Some saw this as the dawn of a new era, first contact with a civilization beyond imagination. Others saw it as the prelude to an existential threat. International coalitions hastily assembled task forces for communication, negotiation, and, if necessary, defense. Scientists drafted messages of peace. Militaries prepared for the unthinkable. Humanity's greatest strengths and fears collided in a single shared realization. We were no longer alone, and we had no control over what came next. Even now, as 3i Atlas prepares its journey toward Earth, the debate continues. Was Mars simply a testing ground, a demonstration of what it can do, or the true objective all along? Was its presence a gesture of curiosity or a strategic move in a cosmic plan we cannot yet comprehend? No one knows. But one thing is certain, everything has changed. Humanity has glimpsed the unimaginable, technology that defies physics, intelligence that speaks through the language of the universe, and a power that could reshape our understanding of existence itself. Whether 3i Atlas comes in peace or not, the silence of space no longer feels empty. It feels like something is listening, and it's getting closer.